Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com and today I'm going to present the hardest thing I've ever printed and I'm challenging you to print it. It is this. This is called the QSN and if you'd like to know a lot more about this particular object, at the end of this video there'll be a little snippet of what the heck this is and how we generated it. But for now, I just want to challenge the 3D printing community. So people like Joe Telling from 3D Printing Nerd and Angus from Maker's Muse and all the other guys out there like that. I know for a fact Angus is going to love this because it is very difficult. He loves these structures and this is a seriously challenging thing to print. So Angus, if you're watching this, I challenge you, print this object. So this QSN I have in my hand is actually 50% of scale. The one that's over here is a full size scale and you can see it's much, much bigger. Now, I figured out that actually the 50% scale is actually easier to print for me. And these angles that you see here are actually exactly 58.25 degrees. And that's a pretty steep angle for a, a filament 3D printer. And the entire structure is very detailed on the inside. So the QSN here is not only a stress test for your 3D printer, but it's also a stress test for your computer, your slicer, and everything in between. This is a pretty big model, and I've actually had slicers completely crash. Others don't combine the cylinders and sticks and balls very well, and others um, do a perfect job but can't put the proper support in the right place. I attempted to print this with minimal support. There's no other support anywhere else in this model. At 58.25 degrees, these angles are just almost too much for the printer to handle in this type of filament 3D printing. So as you can see, I only supported just a few points, and I did that because I want to see, can you print this with almost or no support? Using Simplified 3D, because I could break this down into its component parts, I made one critical change from the original model. These stars are overhanging on nothing. I removed those in the z-axis all the way through the model, and I did that because when you print it this way, those will overhang into nothing and then they will fall down into the model. So that's one critical thing I changed from the original model to the 3D printable model. Using Mesh Mixer, I was able to actually generate a solid, but there's so many triangles that it's almost overload for even my best computer. And the reason that I like Simplified 3D is because you can generate your own support material. Simplified 3D worked really well to make the model a solid and print it out with no intersections. I also tried Slicer Prusa Edition. When it tried to do supports, my computer just kept locking up. Cura seems to load this really well and supports are okay, but I haven't tried printing it with Cura yet because I'm trying to get the supports balanced really, really well. Matter Hacker Mater Control does not like this model at all. KISS Slicer also works really well and does have some issues, but it's actually the first thing I used to print it, and that one turned out pretty darn well. I was very surprised. The first one I printed out actually worked. So you do have hope. You can make it work. The slicing settings that I use, I just want to talk about a few of them because these are actually key components to getting this working. So stringing, you got to worry about stringing. You got to worry about Z-hop, which is when the printer jumps up and down over the next part. Warping, the type of plastics you use. The retraction settings, which is a key component in this. The extrude and retract is not the same. I use a little bit more extrude than I do retract to try to get a little bit of plastic to sort of daub onto the places where I need it. So I'm using a tungsten premium nozzle and a custom home-built hot end. It's actually made of copper. You'll see that in future videos. Out of all of my testing, getting these things to successfully print, I've noticed that if you print too fast or too slow, it does not work very well. I printed between 20 and 30 millimeters per second, and it seems to work really well at those speeds. My retraction speeds are 200 millimeters per second. As long as you don't have any problems with plastic grinding into your extruder, then you should be okay. The layer heights I've been using have been 0 0.2, 0 0.175. 0.175 seems to work pretty well, because if you print really small models, the sticks are so small that you actually lose layers, and it, it's really difficult to print. So you just have to play around with those settings. So how did I actually get this thing to work? How did I tune it to get it to work? Well, I used the spiral light bulb. So this is a great Thingiverse model I've been printing for years. And it has this nice steep angle, and it doesn't have any bridges in it though, so you need to also test bridges. So for bridges, I used the Hypercube. The Hypercube has these nice long bridges, so you can tune the plastics, the printer, the extrusion width, and all these parameters nicely. 
This is actually the hypercube that turned out the best, and this is the best plastic. This is PLA. I also used ABS, which warps way too much, and then cheaper PLAs just didn't seem to work very well. So one of the most difficult things is because of this silly steep angle here, these pieces just stick out. And if you can see that, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual pieces coming out from one very small point. And that makes it very challenging to actually not have warping. You can actually see when you look down, this edge is warping up. That's where you just crash everything, the nozzle hits it, and you usually just end up with a giant mess that looks like this. I want to share with you that I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for all of the prints you see in the background. So this print is a 50% of scale. It is approximately 98 millimeters tall. This model is 75 millimeters tall from tip to tip. It is 42% of scale. This model from tip to tip is 50 millimeters tall. It is 28% of scale. It was getting to the point where it was just almost not feasible. And I, the reason I was doing it with such a big nozzle is just to prove you could. And you do that by dialing down the actual size of the filament and pretending like the nozzle is actually smaller than it really is. And you can achieve this. And the smallest one I attempted to print is 25 millimeters tall. That's ridiculous. A 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 25 millimeters tall. And the detail, yeah, it's there. The print looks okay, but you can actually see the structure, which is completely crazy, especially since this is a homemade machine. This is the best QSN I've printed to date. So let's take just a really, really good look at it so you can see the kind of detail. You can see all the details really nicely. These uprights turned out pretty darn good. And for the most part, I think that's totally successful for a filament style 3D print. And if you get them to print this nice, what's neat is you can hold them right on the tips and you can spin them like this. You can actually see all the way through the structure and you can get a really cool view of what it looks like on the inside. Welcome to my home laboratory. We're in the closet where I've been 3D printing these QSNs. So I've been doing this all on a homemade Delta. This is a complete raw stock built from scratch with a lot of custom parts on it. It's about five years old. And one of the important things about this printer is it doesn't have a direct parts cooling fan. So there's not any air blowing directly over the print at close range. It's actually just a couple of fans in the back. And so I think if you had a parts cooling fan that was directed at the nozzle, you're going to be able to print this even better. But you guys will just have to experiment with that and let me know what your results are. I really want to know if you guys can do this, what model of printer you have, what filament you're using, and everything like that. Just leave those over on the Thingiverse as a I made one. So go for it. I want you to try to print this, I want you to share this, and I want you to share this video because this is just a crazy, crazy structure and I want to hear your stories. I will post this on Thingiverse, so you can leave comments there, leave comments in this video, and let me know what your thought is. This is the only one I printed this big, and it was a fail. I think about 22 hours in, it just got caught and ripped off the bed. And this is the smallest one I've ever printed. It's actually the third one I've ever printed. And it, 25 millimeters tall, it worked out really well. I know, for a fact, you can do it. I want to see your results, so share this video. In the meantime, check out this video of Ray and how we made this. This is Ray and he's going to explain to you how we generated this object, the QSN, that we've been 3D printing. Yes, uh, hello. The QSN uh, is a quasi-crystal. And the quasi-crystal is made from projection of a crystal in eight dimension to a four dimension. And when you project it from eight dimension to four dimension, you have naturally the golden ratio which comes into the projection and it creates Fibonacci chains. And it's then green. the Fibonacci chain. So here you have some code with Mathematica. In another Mathematica notebook, I uh, computed all the small triangles and I detected the, the one which were uh, grouping together into 20 groups with an algorithm. I use a specific uh, uh, system of coordinates, which is a Dirichlet integer, uh, which are numbers where A plus B phi and they come naturally from the projection uh, from AD with uh, the matrix. So we have uh, dodecahedrons, we have uh, icosahedrons, 
of two different sizes, small and bigger. And finally, uh, we use this instruction to export this as a knobs uh, file. So um, I was working here with my uh, QSN and trying to visualize it in 3D, making also some model uh, with MeshLab, uh, manipulating it. And then Russ came come into my office and he looked at this object and he said, I will print it. I say, yes, this is typically the kind of object uh, impossible to print with this kind of 3D printer. You can do it. <laughs> we will have to turn it in the right way to adapt, to test many and many uh, software of uh, layer making. Uh, and it takes many times effectively to find, but finally he did it. And it's wonderful and I'm very happy to have it. Why is it important to have this? It's important to understand uh, our model, uh, our physical model, because this is uh, not only a decorative object, this is uh, our model of uh, quasi-crystalline spin network. And uh, this is to modelize the space, so the point space. Uh, derived from the E8 quasi-crystal, so we have information on the particles. And uh, because this is a spin network, we can uh, compute uh, using loop quantum gravity, transition amplitude, so the dynamics of the physics uh, based on the different lengths and the topology of this network. Thanks, Ray. So if you'd like to figure out a way more detail than you need to know about the QSN, please see the links down in the description and you can go watch other videos on this. And uh, thanks for helping me out. And this thing is nuts. Look at, mm. look at this, look at this little bitty thing. And I like the blue too. Hop. Oh, oh it's so small. <laughs> You're gonna break it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it worked. I knew it would. Perfect. All right, well, hopefully that was interesting to you. This QSN is pretty complicated to print, but I think you guys can do it. And I want to see you try it. I want to see how big you can make this thing, how small you can make this thing, how do you generate the supports, what size nozzle, what size filament. I mean, I want to know those details because I did a lot of work, almost three months worth of work to get this thing to where it is now. So I'm curious if you guys can do it easier, faster, and better than me with the different type of printers that are out there. In the meantime, enjoy this time lapse. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Enjoy.